Hello fellow problem solvers, so today we're continuing with the European Girls Math Olympiad. This time we're focusing on problem number two from day one from 2023, European Girls Math Olympiad. Nice geometry, try it out for at least 15 minutes, ideally 30 to maybe an hour, hour and a half, not more than four hours. And now without further ado, let us begin. So let's first draw the diagram. How would you draw this diagram? Take three minutes and draw a diagram. And what, this is the major point here in this problem. I think this is the key to solving it, in fact. How do you draw this diagram? Oh, look, we have a D, okay, such that A is D's diameter, and then K and L lie on these segments, such that D, K, and D, L are tangents to A, K, L. Wow, how do we draw K and L? How do we even construct them? And then I sure showed this passes through the earth center. Sounds scary. But how do we make it? How do we make the K and L? Where did the K and L come from? That is the big, big, big question here. Pause for three minutes, think about it. And now let us draw, let us do this. So what are we going to do? Well, this is in fact going to be the crux of the problem. And let me just show you. So the normal way we would draw, you would say, okay, here's a circle. We call these, okay, A, B, C, D, this is the point at which we stop the alphabet. And now, okay, how do I draw KNL? Literally, how, how? How would you draw this? How? Explain this to me. How do you construct KNL? Oh, I just put a point here and here. No, no, but which point? How would you precisely construct it? Because what we really need is like, you know, DK and DL to be tangent, so we need them to be equidistant from D. Okay, so there's like many of these circles. Now there's D. And then we need this circle to be tangent. So we need this circle to be perpendicular to this other. Okay, what I'm trying to get at here is it's difficult. And if you don't have a good diagram, you're not going to solve a problem. I mean, most of the time, but here it's especially true. But say you had K and L. Would it be easy to now draw a good diagram pause for two minutes just think about it. this is a vague hint but here's the idea say instead of that say i first draw uh, this nice circle it's actually kind of an oval but sure i have this like a and now i draw k l I draw the D, now it's easier to draw D, right? This is now alpha, alpha, alpha. And now what is B and C? Well, I extend AK, put down a perpendicular, AL, put down a perpendicular, and I get B and C. This is how I draw the diagram. And this tells me what to focus on. And now here, draw a nice diagram, and I invite you to See, okay, now that you've drawn a nice diagram, what are you going to focus on? Take three minutes and think about that. And now here's a much nicer diagram. So now we have this diagram. And now, okay, we have this angle is alpha. Now, what do you also see? You can now also see it generally because now you know this is, now, depending on how much you know about geometry and generally how much you know about actually configurations within geometry, you can see that, okay, the angles, ABC, AKL aren't going to be that close to each other because like the angle here is really a product of the angle on the simidian point, right? Like the angle that the simidian forms or take the midpoint here. And so you're not gonna have that much connection there, right? That's the first thing to notice. But now what I said, you know, take three minutes, like what I really wanted to see is how do you go about solving this problem now? Now you can try and explore, you know, what angles I have. Okay, this is the Symedian line. Maybe I take the midpoint here. I look at these circumcircles, you know, that I'm going to have because this is 1990. Calculate some angles, see what I have. And you might actually go ahead and solve the problem by doing that. But I want to actually show a different way. And now that I'm looking at this problem, I think I kind of get how it was made but basically the idea now is okay 
let's solve the problem in one of two ways, so either forwards or backwards. So let's go backwards. Let's see what is it that if the problem statement was true, if there was H that was here, the or center of ABC, what else would hold true? You know, without any adding anything else. So what would be true? Well, BH would be 90, right? So this angle right here would be 90. That would make this angle over here 90 minus alpha. And that would make this angle over here alpha. What does that give you? Pause now, please, for three minutes. Ask yourself, what does this give you? And the answer is quite beautiful, in fact. It gives you that, oh, look, HKD is also alpha. And this is alpha. So these must be concyclic. Similarly, analogously, symmetrically, we would have this one over here is also alpha. In other words, this would also be concyclic. Oh, look at that. What else would it be? This would be 90. Oh, isn't 90 beautiful when it's concyclic? The answer is yes, it is. Yes, it is. This is how we finish it. And now let us finish this problem. And in fact, what do we do? How do we actually go about finishing this? We would say, okay, we have this, you know, circle. What's it called? A K L. We have the D. We would say this is alpha is equal to this one is equal to this angle. Take here B and C. And we'd say let the midpoint of K L, we call it H. You know, just saying, oh, it's H. We'll see what happens to it. And we know that DHK is 90. So we know, oh, looky, looky, look, we know these are concyclic. And so given these are concyclic, what does that give us? That gives us that this angle over here, which is 90 minus alpha is equal to this one, which is 90 minus alpha. Oh, looky that BH happens to be perpendicular to AL. I will stop now. I see that you might be getting bored of my jokes. But now look at that. One more joke. Look at that. Oh, this is alpha two because these are also concyclic. Oh, so this is 90 minus alpha. And now what do we have? Oh, we have this is 90 as well, even though it doesn't look like it. But it's 90 and we are done. And the problem is over. This is just not the problem. It's as simple as that. Boom. I mean, it's not. It's simple once I show you a solution. But the main idea is twofold. One. How do you draw the diagram? How do you construct a problem? Like this is really the crux of what you're going to focus on, you know, shifting a perspective. Instead of looking at this in terms of triangle ABC, I'm looking at this in terms of triangle AKL. No, B and C, important, sure, but secondary. And then, okay, let me see what can I get. I can, I mean, like we could have potentially looked at the angles. And the reason I say Semidian is something we could have looked at is because if you actually think about like H is the midpoint of KL. So if we actually looked at this problem in that sort of different way, looking at the Semedian line, let's go. So this is D, K, L. Now we have our B and C. And say we were looking at, okay, we have this point, which is the midpoint called M. We have this angle is equal to this one is equal to this angle and this angle is equal to 90. So this is X, X, then this is X and then this is 90 minus X. So we might be would have, you know, stumbled into, okay, now AM must be perpendicular to BC, right? And what do we have with that? After AM is, has to be perpendicular to BC and we know that H is the earth center. Well, then H must be M, right? So this could have also given us a different, you know, sort of perspective, way to look at the problem. Also, nice quick finish. And this is pretty much it. This is the problem. And, you know, it goes to show like how important it is. Sure, it's cool to know these things about some medium point lines and whatnot and theory, but, you know, just think about how do I draw? How do I draw my diagram? Helps you sometimes just solve the problem. This finishes everything up, and as always, thanks for problem solving.